So, welcome everyone. Welcome to Brandforsk and our result webinar presenting the research project Fire and Explosion Hazards of Alternative Fuel Vehicles in Tunnels. My name is Matthias Delin and I'm the research director of Brandforsk, the Swedish Fire Research Foundation. Yes, I think there are a, <clears throat> a few attendees still uh, logging into the system, but I think that we will we will start. And um, so, uh, Ying Sen, would you like to present yourself a bit? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm Ying Zhen Li. I'm working as a senior researcher at the Rice Research Institute of Sweden since 2010. And uh, my main research interests are in fire safety in tunnels, and the fire and the explosion safety of alternative fuel vehicles and the scale modeling and the safety modeling of fires. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's very good. And we will see more of you in a while. We'll, we'll first see your presentation about this project and then we will have some time for, for uh, questions and discussions. So just a few words about Brandforsk. Um, we have a vision. We work for a fire safe society built on knowledge. We develop and communicate knowledge, mostly research, and to limit the negative consequences of uh, fire in the society. We started in 1979 and we are a foundation since two years ago. We have supporting organizations that fund everything that we do. And uh, this makes us a collaboration between many parts of the society. And so far we have raised about uh, 600,000 euro and i hope that uh, we will uh, get some more money before the end of the year and and hope that some of you also will consider uh, supporting us we use the, uh, the our money uh, for research and result communication as for example like a webinar like this one we also have a research school for practicing practice <laughs> practicing fire safety engineers at uh, fire services and we also have scholarships for students. Uh, and these are our supporting organization and it's thanks to them that we can do this. And um, uh, we have, as I said, about 600,000 euros so far this year. We hope for more and uh, please support us if you not already are. The program today looks like this. After this short introduction, we will get a presentation of the project. And after that, uh, there will be time for questions and discussions. And please write your questions in the Q&A. So let's now go to the presentation. Yeah, hello, everyone. My name is Ying Zhen Li. Today, I'm going to have a presentation on fire and explosion hazards of alternative fuel vehicles in tunnels. This project is financed by Swedish Fire Research Board and All Forsk Foundation. So, very thanks. First, I give some background. So, it's kind of confusing that, uh, about what type of uh, vehicles will be the future. Like, will it be biofuels? Currently, we know that uh, there have been some bans on use of uh, hydrocarbon fuels planned uh, in some years. And uh, currently, there are plenty of uh, electrical vehicles like a Tesla. And also, there are some other techniques emerging like hydrogen driven vehicles. There can be two types of hydrogen vehicles. One type is a traditional internal combustion engine vehicles. Another type is a fuel cell vehicles. But uh, we have to face the reality. What type of fuel, what type of uh, alternative fuel vehicles are on roads now? Those vehicles, the related the fire and explosion hazards that we have to deal with. And there are, for example, the traditional fuels typically related to internal combustion engine like gasoline vehicles, like diesel vehicles, and ethanol, CNG, 
or even compressed hydrogen, or liquefied fuels like LNG, LPG, LDME, and electrical battery vehicles and the fuel cell vehicles. So all these vehicles in reality are on loads. So we, this is the vehicles and the related uh, fire and the explosion hazards that we have to deal with. So why we do this research is really less quite limited information about uh, almost about everything like parameters for these different type of vehicles running on roads. Like how the amount and how is the configuration and the fire hazards, what type of fire hazards and what type of explosion hazards that may be involved in an incident related to this type of vehicle. So in this project, we focus on the safety in tunnels. The reason is that uh, we know that in confined space, these hazards can be more severe due to the special space. For example, the blast wave attenuate more slowly, or you may say it can trans, trans, travel longer distance. Okay, first uh, we need to understand or get some information about uh, these type of vehicles. So the first type is the CNG vehicle. It typically operates at a pressure of 200 bar and at the normal temperature. And uh, for the safety reasons, yeah, they, they are typically equipped with pressure relief device. The abbreviation is PRD. Reason is that in case of a incident, for example, in case of a fire, you don't want to get uh, the tank uh, burst. So we want to release the gas according upon some criteria. Like uh, typically the criteria is a temperature of 110 degree and the pressure of 340 bar. So when the temperature of the PRD reach this level, it will, will activate. So the gas can released. So the pressure will not build up, the high pressure will not be to build up inside the tank. This is to avoid the burst. And for the vehicle, for personal vehicles and light, light the commercial vehicles, this is the amount of fuel for the vehicle, 11 to 37 kilogram. Typically, it has one to five tanks. And for each tank, the amount of fuel is in a range of 10 to 20 kilogram. And for buses, it's much higher. You see the values here. And for each tank, it's around 20 to 50 kilogram. So you see there are plan several low tanks for one bus. And for trucks, yeah, the parameters are similar. And for compressed gas, uh, compressed the uh, hydrogen vehicles, I mentioned that there are two types of internal combustion engine vehicles and also for fuel cell vehicles. The pressure is even higher. The tank pressure is typically either at the 350 bar or 700 bar, but the temperature is also normal. As there are not so many this type of vehicles, that are on roads or on markets. The parameters, what I have found is the amount of uh, fuel is not uh, that large, is between 2.4 and 6 kilogram. But in the future, we can expect if this type of uh, vehicles become mature and really put widely used, uh, then probably the fuel amount need to be much larger. Otherwise, it cannot drive for long distance. Another type of LNG, liquefied natural gas. The natural gas is stored in liquid form and is mainly used for heavy duty vehicles. The operating pressure is much lower, four to 10 bar, but the operating temperature is much, much lower. 
also much, much lower. In minus 140 degree to minus 136 degree. The activation pressure for PRD is in a range of 15 to 30 bar. So we also get the parameters for this type of uh, vehicles. The tank is much larger. Typically like one truck has like two tanks and each tank it contains a lot of uh, over 100 kilogram. And you can up to 450 kilogram in total for one truck. And uh, we see the temperature is really low. So these tanks should be some kind of a cryogenic tanks. Typically the number is one or two. And for liquefied uh, propane gas, in reality, it has been used for a while since the past uh, year 1970s. And its operating pressure is also quite low, eight to 10 bar. And the, the special thing here, you can notice that the operating temperature is normal compared to the LNG, it's minus 140 degree. The activation pressure is similar at around 32 bar. And the LPG, the fuel tank is similar to like a gasoline. You may say personal vehicles, 50 to 100 liters and trucks can up to 400 liters. There are also other type of uh, liquefied fuel like LDME and LH2, a liquefied hydrogen here. And the MA is very similar to LPG. The LH2, the hydrogen, the operating pressure is also low around five bar, but the temperature is pretty low, minus 252 degree. And the activation pressure is around eight bar. Another type is the electrical vehicles. There are really many lithium ion batteries. This is a list of the battery types. Yeah, a battery typically consists of a cathode, anode, and electrolyte. And the electrolyte consists of solvent and salt, such as LiPF6. And there are also many different types of solvent. It's listed here. From the combustion point of view, the flammable solvent is typically around 12% of the total mass. And the typical heat of combustion is 16 megajoule per kilogram. For batteries, a very severe problem is the thermal runaway. So if something goes wrong in the battery, the temperature can rise. And the wind reaches over 150 degrees or slightly higher, it goes like long away. So that is kind of out of control. So it, the battery will vent out a lot of the gases due to the chemical process, such as hydrogen and even hydrogen fluorant. Hydrogen is really a big issue. It can easily cause sap ignition. So you really, you don't need to external source. It can self ignite it. The vented gases. For personal vehicles, another characteristic for EV is that the battery pack is really heavy. Like personal vehicles, it can up to 540 kilograms. And for buses, it can be 2.5 tons. Trucks can be 3.3 tons. It's only, this is the weight of the battery packs. Okay, now we have uh, obtained some information about the different type of uh, alternative fuel vehicles. Um, we may want to see from a safety point of view, what would be the consequence in case of incident related to such vehicles. On the left, the first uh, picture is a, a test of an LNG pool. The energy pool has a diameter around 100 meter and the frame length 
is around 300 meter. So it is really huge LNG. You may say like natural gas, why natural gas? It appears to be like a poor fire. Recently, it's let the LNG, when it leak out, part of the fuel will immediately evaporate, but still a large amount of fuel will remain in liquid form at a very low temperature. So when it ignites, it will behave like a liquefied, liquid fuel, just like a gasoline and a diesel. And the, the special thing is that the heat, the fire size, the fire intensity, like a per unit area can be quite high. And we will do a more detailed analysis later. And in the middle, we see a small video about the incident, a simulation of an incident in Norway. So it's a truck. And not uh, is the fuel tank uh, who hit, which hit uh, the, the it detaches from the locomotive and then hit uh, the wall and so the fuel, fuel leak out and the tunnel is quite uh, has a quite large slope uh, around the ten percent so the fuel yeah flow downward for around four hundred meter to the to a plateau of the tunnel. So the fire ignites at the leakage point and then trans, how do you say, spread downward. You see the fire and the smoke travel downward. The fire size was estimated to be around 400 megawatt. A lot of the contribution comes from the spilled liquid. And on the right side, I put it this side. Okay, we can see it's an LPG fuel tank, a large tank. And there was fire outside. So when the tank was exposed to fire, yeah, it, it increased the temperature and the pressure. Anyway, the PRD operates. So it left is a jet fire, jet frame there. But uh, when the fire continues to heat up the tank, it can burst. So it like a, it's called a liquid, boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion. Anyway, it's a tank burst. So we can see it clearly. Is a tank burst called the breath. Then the vapor is ignited, resulting in a fireball. Well, sorry, resulting in a fireball. So there are three phenomena involved in like it's a jet fire and the breath and the fireball. So typically, the fire hazards is kind of a spilled pool fires, jet fires and fireballs. And for explosion hazards, it can be like a compressed gas tank can rupture. And also a liquefied tank can also rupture, but it has a special name called the breath. And also if the gas, released is pre-mixed with air. Then later it, it is ignited by a source, then it can, or by itself, can form a gas cloud explosion. Another example is the Klana tunnel incident in Stockholm. It's a CNG tank. So the tank hit something caused the rupture and then followed by a fireball. Then later, the whole bus was involved in the burning. 
So nothing left, you see, from the right picture. So such an incident is quite complex. The start from tank rupture and followed by a fireball and then long lasting fires until all the fuels burn out. So typically we we may make like an event tree. This is an example for qualitative analysis. A compressed gas vehicles. Of course, of course, the best thing is that uh, the fuel tank is not involved in the incident, so nothing happens. For example, it starts at the other parts of the vehicle and get suppressed by firefighter. But in case, it doesn't. So of course, we hope that uh, the PRD works. Then the gas is released continuously. So it kind of uh, uh, control the case. So if there is an ignition, it can be a jet fire. But uh, if, like a Klanda tunnel, it has uh, caused a large hole on the tank, it, it can cause an instantaneous gas release. If there is no ignition, it's only a tank rupture. But if there is an ignition, it can be rupture and a fireball. After release of the gas, for whatever type of release, like instantaneous release or continuous release, if these fuels are premixed with air and ignited later, then it can cause the explosion. The most common one is the deflagration. And in a tunnel, due to the long traveling distance of the flame, a deflagration can even become a detonation. So we summarize some most probable scenarios related to leased vehicles. Liquefied vehicles, typically poor fires. I mean, liquid fuel vehicles. Liquefied, it can be jet fires with poor fires due to a large amount of a liquefied fuel still remain in liquid form. So it can, they can happen both, I mean, together. And it can also be a breath with fireballs or gas cloud explosion in case of a late ignition of the premixed gas. And the compressed gas vehicles is similar. Jet fires, gas tank rupture with fireballs and a, or a gas cloud explosion. And then for electrical battery vehicles or EVs, can be normal fires with small jet flames. It can also be a gas cloud explosion. And in all these cases, it can be a follow-up fires if the vehicles are ignited. And from statistics, statistics it is found that the physical failure is quite a common scenario. Let me make a tank rupture. Even without ignition, liquefied fuel vehicles and compressed gas vehicles, they pose explosion hazards. And battery vehicles, they may pose toxicity problems in case of a thermal runaway, like the production of uh, HF. First, we try to quantify the fire hazards from a spilled uh, pool fires. As load surface typically has slopes, especially like in tunnel, it has a transverse, transverse slope and also longitudinal slope. This is a, a typical spillage area you can see from here. And we have equations to estimate the, the area of a spillage. And also we can estimate it, how large the fire can be. So this table summarize some information about uh, like the heat release rate per unit area, spirit area, and the total heat release rate. This, of course, is based on assumption that uh, the fuels can be drained out. If it cannot be drained out uh, close to the incident size, site, it can become a problem like uh, what I show, like a 400 meter long spirit. 
from this table, we can see, for example, we directly compare the peak heat release rate here. As you know, as you know, is around two. This is the case anyway. And the, the gasoline diesel is like around the 10, but the LPG, LNG, and LH2 is around 40 to 50 megawatt. So apparently regarding fire size, liquid fuels can be even lower, refer to even lower fire hazards. But the, the liquefied fuels, LPG and LNG, LH2, they can really produce large fires. Now the typical type is a jet fires. What would be a jet fire size or the other characteristics? So I have done analysis of the possible scenarios. So the flow through a PRD is also, it's a nozzle in reality. It's a, typically it's a critical flow of very large, velocity over is typically several hundred meters per second. And this is a show examples of a 20 kilogram CNG tank. It, for each curve, it has a curves for different uh, PRD diameter, different size of the nozzle. This is the pressure, how it varies with time. This is the mass. This is best flow rate, this is fan length. And uh, you see here is 200 seconds. So it is quite clear that uh, all these parameters, they vary with time, or they decrease with time quite rapidly. And such event, such a release, is typically is like within one to two minutes. I mean, most of the fuel will be released. Here is an example. Yeah, mostly like uh, within four minutes. And uh, we see the flame length, it can be pretty long. It's 35 meter. In case the nozzle is 10 millimeter in diameter. So such a long flame, yeah, we can imagine it may cause, it may impinge onto vehicles next to this, the incident of the vehicle, or may cause problem to a structure. So the main conclusion here is the flow is critical flow or choked flow. And the, the PRD diameter is a vital parameter for the release behavior. And the parameters rapidly decrease with time. And yeah, so the duration is very short. What happened? So here, give a table for other type of uh, compressed gas tanks, but also including the CNG tanks. And here, liquefied fuel tanks, it is a little bit different. So if the PRD nozzle is on the gas side, even on the liquid side, so the scenario will be different. So the main conclusion here is that the, the fire size is really large for the compressed gas tanks com compared to the liquefied fuel tanks. And also very long flame lengths, it can cause a problem due to the impingement and extension of the frames. And the frame length is proportional to the PRD diameter. And there is high risk for fire spread. But in any case, liquefied fuel tanks pose lower hazards than compressed gas tanks concerning jet fires. But meanwhile, meanwhile it should be kept in mind that uh, yeah, liquefied gas tanks, it can cause poor fires. If, if the spill on floor, it can also easily cause fire spread. Yeah, the third phenomenon related to fire hazard is a fireball. The fireball is always followed by a tank rupture. 
So on open loads or in the open, <clears throat> there are correlations to estimate like how large the diameter of the fireball and the duration of the fireball. And uh, I conduct a theoretical study and uh, to estimate the fireball length in tunnels. So it indicates how long the fireball can be in a tunnel. For example, here, we compare the fireball diameter in the open and the fireball lamps in a 50 square meter tunnel. You see here, after around the five kilogram, the fireball lamps is higher or even is larger than the fireball diameter in the open. And it can be really long, significant longer fireball lens in tunnels. Then we need to also estimate the explosion hazards. There are two, mainly two types of explosion. One is the tank rupture, including the complex gas tank rupture and also the liquefied gas tank rupture, which is called the breath. And the, I have developed a model to yeah, a compressible flow solver to simulate it, uh, the, both the consequence from a gas, gas tank rupture and also the cloud explosion. So it's a 1D model, but it can shoot both for 1D tunnel flow, simplified 2D plan flow, and also 3D spherical flow. First, uh, we conduct the verification. So we use four test scenarios, simulate and compare. The first one is a, a closed uh, 91, 0.4 meter long natural gas tube with this diameter. They inject the natural gas, gas into it and see the pressure wave changes. Oh, so you see the line and numerical results, they correlate quite well. And then the second case is the rupture of a liquefied CO2 tank. You see the comparison, yeah, not too bad. The result is a machine cloud explosion in an eight meter long tunnel. It's a 0 0.25 meter high and 0 0.5 meter wide. Uh, CH4, natural gas uh, machine is uh, filled in the whole tunnel, uh, ignited uh, at the closed end. So this is the test result, this is numerical results. You see the the main behavior, uh, these three lines refer to three locations, the close end, the middle of the tunnel and the open portal. Yeah, also not too bad. And the fourth scenario is refers to a hydrogen cloud explosion in a tunnel. It's in a 78.5 meter, meter long with an area of 3.74 square meter. And the hydrogen is filled in a 10 meter section. <clears throat> so this is results close to the tunnel acid. So we have uh, compared the different scenarios, the pressure solver, the tank rupture, and the cloud explosion. Then we use this tool to analyze the gas tank rupture and the breath consequence. The left refer to CNG at 200 bar and of different uh, mass 10 kilogram to 50 kilogram. And the LNG tank is much larger, vary from 110 kilogram to 220 kilogram. Here, only one tank is considered. The reason is that the tank rupture is a such instantaneous scenario. So we don't expect all the tanks 
on one week will rupture simultaneously. That's the reason. So even they separate for, I mean, several seconds, I think uh, at least of some stream should work. And to compare these two graphs, we can see that, uh, <clears throat> for example, 100,000 Pascal. Yeah, we need a larger amount of LNG to produce this blast wave. But for CNG, the mass is much smaller. So, yeah, so it means that uh, for same amount of the fuel, the CNG can produce a larger blast wave, a stronger blast wave with a higher blast over pressure. Here we make a comparison of the energy and also over pressure at the 50 meter and 100 meter for different type of vehicles. Main conclusion here you see is explosion energy is mostly in a range of two to 30 megajoule. The peak over pressure at 50 meter is mainly around the 0.1 to 0.36 bar. And at the 100 meter, it is lower in a range of 0.07 to 0.24 bar. The duration of the blast wave pressure is <clears throat> mostly in a range of 0.1 to 0.5 seconds, almost 0.1 to 0.25 seconds. The consequence of such incidents is relatively kind of marginal for locations over 50 to 100 meter. But uh, some case we see, for example, like it's already over 20, even 36, thousand Pascal here. Then in some case, there may be a need to reduce the amount of fields or specifically reduce the amount of fuel in one single tank. As we have uh, considered that uh, there will be, generally there will be no case that all fuel tank will rupture at the same time. Another type of explosion is gas cloud explosion. That means the release gas premix with uh, and later ignites when it uh, when it influenced by some ignition source. This is uh, the left side of CNG with different uh, quantities of fuels from 10 to 400 kilogram. Here we have shown that all fuels are released and they pre-mixed. And then at some moment it uh, ignites. As I have mentioned, in a confined space like a tunnel, the frame, it can travel long distance and typically the frame speed increase with distance, with traveling distance. And at some point, the combustion will become a detonation. Before the detonation is this type of combustion, although it's quite a faster speed, it's called a deflagration. But at some point, for example, over a thousand meter per second, it can it's kind of uh, similar to like some runway, it can become a detonation. We see here, when the fuel is above 160 kilogram, it can become a detonation at around 45 meter or at around 50 meter. The, the bottom one is just uh, this part of the uh, figure will make it bigger to see more clearly for the smaller amounts of uh, CNG. But uh, we can simply have the feeling that uh, the blast wave pressure is much higher than the tank burst. And here is LPG. We also make a conservative uh, 
assumption again. So the fuel involved in combustion include uh, both the flash rate fuels, that means the instantaneous evaporated fuels, and also the aerosols and the spray sprays. So typically when we do an estimation for LPG, yeah, we use somewhat higher amount of thermal flash rate fuels due to the consideration of aerosols and the sprays. And for a battery, we assume all solvents yeah, have been released. So, and involved in the combustion. So this is the results. So you see a CNG for a maximum, or you may, or you may say the, for the vehicles that exist on those, it can up to 32 bar, and for LPG can up to eight bar. For battery, it can up to 12 bar. In reality, yeah, they are pretty high. So we also give a summary of the energy or pressure at the different locations for these vehicles in case of a gas cloud explosion. The energy, explosion energy is mostly between 0.2 to 23 gigajoules, apparently much greater than the energy from a tank rupture. The peak over pressure is mostly between point. 15 to 11.2 bar at 50 meter, and the point 15 to 18.5 bar at 100 meter. Duration is similar. It's mostly between 0.1 to 0.5 seconds. And the consequence of such incidents is quite clear that uh, they are not uh, tolerable over 50 to 100 meter. And even for the whole tunnel, Of course, we need to, to keep in, in mind that uh, we assume that uh, all fields are involved in the stored geometric mixing. But uh, it is still surprising that uh, the blast over pressure is so high for gas cloud explosion related to such vehicles. And so that can be a need to reduce the amount of fuels. For example, maybe we can increase the number of tanks. So in each tank, the amount of fuel is less. So we may not always assume that uh, all tanks will fail or at the same time. So we can reduce the risk. Or for battery vehicles, we may strictly prevent fire spread to other battery modulars. So to, pre to control the, the space or the region of the number of battery that involved in a thermal runway or involved in a fire incident. So we may also compare the explosion hazards for same energy at will. The reason here is that it's mainly compared for the vehicles that are on roads based on the collected information. But here we may make a, a more fair comparison based on like energy at will. For example, this means like uh, for same <clears throat> type of uh, vehicle, it can drive, for example, like uh, 500 kilometer. The energy co cost uh, for such uh, driving. So that means how much uh, fuel need to be from a CNG hydrogen or from a EV. For example, for the EVs, we start from the EV electrical vehicles, it's 200 to 4.6 tons. Energy at will ranges yeah, and the, the energy contained in the fuels, the batteries, and the, the energy that can be used. But the least energy 
is real energy, it's not explosion energy. We need to transfer the to the explosion energy, chemical energy. And for internal combustion engine. So here in red, we use the energy efficiency. So from the, we can compare the explosion energy for battery and for, in, for uh, traditional vehicles. In reality, the battery, yeah, for the same energy as wheel, it uh, needs, it, it uh, referred to a higher explosion energy. Although they are approximately the same, where values for batteries are slightly greater than others. Here, the two columns refer to the kilogram of CNG and H2 at the same energy at the wheel. So we can make a summary. So in this project, uh, different type of uh, alternative fuel vehicles are investigated and we obtain the detailed parameters. Then qualitatively and quantitatively, we analyze the risks and the consequence for each type of these vehicles in tunnels. And for some, yeah, we can also draw, draw some like simple conclusions, like liquefied fuel tanks produce large spill fires. And the complex gas tanks produce large fire size and the long flame lengths. So it may impinge on to other vehicles and all the structure and cause some problems. And the fireballs in tunnels can be much longer than on open loads. And the gas cloud exposure energies are approximately the same for all these types of uh, vehicles, but they have various fire hazards. And the consequence of gas tank rupture and the breath are relatively tolerable or marginal at 50 to 100 meters away but the situations in case of a gas cloud explosion are mostly very severe and intolerable for tunnel users, even in the whole tunnel. So this gas cloud explosion is just really a big issue. Although maybe not all fuel will be involved and the tank rupture may be a more common instant but uh, like uh, when do analysis of like a worst case scenario, yeah, this should be kept in mind. That is the hazards of gas cloud explosion from this type of vehicles, especially in confined space. The more information can be found here. I go to journal paper, publishing fire safety journal, rest report, ground force report, and also to conference papers. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Uh, we have a few questions already. Um, and uh, the first one is about this uh, PR, TRPD, thermal and pressure relief device. And, uh, and we have a question about the malfunctioning of, of those. Um, do you know what the what the reality? What, what what is the probability of uh, of a malfunction in in such? You know that? Yeah, it's great that I got the question at the beginning of the presentation, so I have some time to read my own reports papers. <laughs> so it's the PRD PRD malfunction. Of course, it refers to how do you define a PRD fun malfunction? There can be two cases. For example, some physical failure causes that uh, the gas cannot be released, some kind of blocked, or even like a valve not functioning. That can be also another case like a localized fire. So the tank is heated, a little bit far away from the PRD, so it won't as it's mainly thermal 
thermally triggered uh, device, a PRD, so it may not be able to function as intended. So this is a two types. So uh, US Department of Transportation, they did a study on they collect some data and they get some results. So that conclusion is around 42% uh, of the PRDs are working as it intended yeah, in the incident that they collected. So that means around 58% it didn't work well. So it, and also they are sure that about 35% uh, uh this prd were not functioning is probably due to the localized fire so we may say around in a range of 35 to 58 percent yeah that uh, the prd didn't function as planned oh that's that's quite low um yeah i mean i mean that's like, like half yeah yes about half yes i also heard about um uh, in the beginning, they quite often mounted them pointing upwards and they collected moist of water and, and in cold countries they had a freezing problem in those, but then they solved that by turning it aside so it didn't collect any moist. Yeah. I don't know if you've yeah. heard about this. Yeah, so maintaining is apparently is very important. Yes, yes. And we also have a question about um, the regulations for hydrogen cars, um, the localized fire exposure test. Um, do you think it's effective in reducing the failure probability of, uh, of hydrogen cars? There are certain some limitations about the existing testing protocol. As the existing yeah, test uh, lasted only for very short uh, duration, only like uh, two minutes. If you continue to let it burn, so <laughs> yeah, almost it's quite hard to really pass the test alone. So, but anyway, I think if we have some kind of a testing protocol, that's, that's excellent, that's good. Apparently better than without uh, anything. Right. So even for like using the old testing protocol for like the new energy vehicle or alternative vehicles, I think it's applicable some, somehow anyway. But, uh, but the, about the duration apparently is a problem. How do they? So I think uh, if we at least we have something to use for like a reference test. Yeah, it's a good thing. But the, like the localized fire exposure, it's really, anyway, can kind of, if like uh, some tanks, they pass this test, I mean, anyway, it should, they should perform better than those that didn't pass. But uh, apparently, I think land, we need uh, really a good uh, test pro protocol for this type of different type of uh, vehicles. Of course, referring to the reality, the, the real incidents. The, the main thing for if some tanks perform well in such a test, I think uh, the main advantage is that means that these tanks, they can probably delay the process of mark functioning of the tank. For example, burst, all the other issues, all the jet fire. Yeah. So it's, it's positive. Although it's apparently we need to do a lot of work on this. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, a few more questions. Um, uh, We have a lot of questions here, and and some of them are concerning um, uh, similar things. Actually, uh, we have one thing about the flame speed, and you talked about uh, the risk of the, the deflagration turning into detonation in the tunnel when you have a, a turbulence and and a, and a 
very long distance for the flame to propagate. And uh, can you develop that a little bit more? Uh, maybe give some practical tips on how to handle that when you, for example, do a risk analysis in a tunnel? Yeah. Yeah, about the gas cloud explosion. Like uh, if it's only open without any obstructions, is a uh, easier like an ideal case. But in reality, in like confined space like the tunnels or even other like underground garage, there are many vehicles. Yeah, yeah, you can regard it learn as like uh, obstructions. It can really have influence, strong influence on the uh, cloud explosion. You know, cloud explosion, it, uh, of course, it, it, uh, we know that it, uh, it needs some kind of ignition source. After it ignites, at the beginning, the uh, speed is like laminar fan speed. Yeah. But then later, it can develop after like impinge or pass by obstruction, the turbulence can increase. So the local flame velocity can be increased. So the flame speed, if there are enough fuel in that uh, cloud or region, then the flame speed will increase continuously. Especially in tunnel, the flame speed uh, increase quite rapidly how to say much more rapidly compared to like uh, in the open right, right. so <clears throat> so that means if there are the cloud lens cloud uh, is big enough there is a risk uh, that uh, the frame speed can be so high and the combustion phenomena can transit from a uh, deflagration to detonation yeah i, I have uh, done some analysis of like how long it can be. We technically it's called a DDT, like a deflection to detonation transition. Mm -hmm. you, you may have interest in like the lens of the DDT. Yeah, it, it's related to the lens scale or like uh, for example, for tunnel, how, how large the tunnel is. So the a general conclusion is a larger one means shorter distance. Uh, I mean, non-dimensional distance is shorter, but in rare, in reality, the practical, in like uh, the lens emitter is still a little bit bigger. But, uh, but anyway, practically, I may give some kind of indication about how long it can be to for this distance. Like hydrogen, it needs a shorter distance. And then compared to other vehicles like a mesh M, like a mesh M, the, Non-dimensional, uh, okay, is typically the lens is around eight to 10 times tunnel diameter that uh, you may get uh, detonation. Right. But for hydrogen, it's mainly around the six to seven times tunnel diameter. So in practice is around the, like a machine is generally around 50 to 60 meter. And for hydrogen, it can be between 30 to 50 meters. But of course, it, it means the, the scenario refer to like a, like a obstruction around like 20%. If it's heavily blocked, like a, as a very long queue, there may be some difference. But, but anyway, this phenomena is really quite a local phenomena. So it related to the obstruction, how large the block, uh, obstruction is and uh, how they were distributed uh, in the region or in the traveling paths of the frame. So it's mainly the key is the turbulence really, which really stimulate the combustion which really force the transition from a deflagration to detonation. But, but anyway, this is a risk that we really need to consider. Yes, right. Thank you. And um, um, you touched the subject and I've been thinking about the differences between uh, C and D, for example, and 
hydrogen gas. You showed in your um, the overpressure test that uh, when you had uh, a cloud explosion, the, the pressure peak in the hydrogen gas was about 30 times the pressure peak of the of the CNG. But later on in the comparison of explosion hazards, you had very small amounts of hydrogen, and they also mentioned that. So um, if one should compare those different gases and how would you like to scale them? Uh, you just mentioned that hydrogen needs a shorter distance to go to detonation. Um, is it any, can you put in terms like the differences between the gases and what to think about when, when having them in the, in your tunnel? <clears throat> okay. You mean the, the peak waves, peak pressures from the machine and the, the hydrogen, the difference between them. Yeah. 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 But in the presentation, in reality, the main purpose of uh, the project is to to investigate the exist the fire and explosion hazards of existing alternative fuel vehicles. So, the, about the hydrogen vehicles, in reality, I didn't find too many such type of analysis. Not, uh, I haven't found any really vehicles with very large hydrogen tank. Right. That's right. the that's the issue. So in reality, when we do the analysis, it's only for small tanks. It's up to 20 kilogram hydrogen. But for CNG, it's up to 400 kilogram. So that's the difference. But uh, comparing these two fuels, uh, hydrogen apparently is more severe, can cause more severe consequence. Hydrogen, uh, I mean, from the peak uh, pressures, is higher if for the same amount of uh, fuel. And uh, another reason why hydrogen is more severe, can cause more severe problem is the hydrogen can be more easily ignited. Right. Yeah, and it has very wide flammability range. So it means it can burn almost at every point. And also it, uh, it can easily, not say easily, it's possible to self ignite. So uh, like the, the burst of a hydrogen tank or even the, the PRD release of a hydrogen tank, it can cause a self ignition. So it's a little bit, bit different too and it's kind of a more severe problem for us really. So hydrogen, not only hydrogen tank, but also the EV electrical vehicles, you know, the lithium ion batteries, they release a lot of hydrogen. So if, if there's a thermal runway, it generally there's a fire or at least like a fireworks or even an explosion. So typically it involves burning, not compared to the other type like CNG is a little bit, little bit different. So hydrogen is not only hydrogen problem, not only refer to the hydrogen tank, but also the uh, electric vehicles. Oh yeah, right, right. Thank you. Um, and we have some questions about um, getting more information. Um, and and uh, uh, I can mention that your report is on our web, on, on our web page and this webinar will be uh, published on the on our YouTube channel in a few days, so it's possible to to catch up if you if someone missed it missed anything in it. Um, you showed a picture of of um, this CNG bus accident in Stockholm two years ago, and we have a question about what what's your what's your guess uh, if we would have continued into the tunnel and because the tunnel roof was too low for that bus. So it would have uh, ruptured the tanks inside the tunnel instead. Um, if you would have a, a qualified guess here, what, what would be the scenario in that case? Yeah, it's a tank rupture followed by a fireball and then subsequent fires in the bus. So if it is in the tunnel, I think the scenario will be similar. 
Of course, this client is uh, it hits some kind of beans, so cause the failure of the tank. But of course, there can be also other reasons like a collision between vehicles or collision to walls or other type of objects in the tunnel. Or maybe just the malfunction of the tank itself. If you don't maintain it well, it may have problems. And, uh, yeah, you get a surprise if it, in a tunnel in such a case. But uh, as in the presentation, yeah, as shown in the presentation, the fireball, it yes. will be much longer. And also the tank pressure, the brass width decay. Yeah, typically the peak pressure will decay along distance. But in a tunnel, it will decay much more slowly. That's just due to the confined space. There's not so much space to really absorb the energy. So it's transferred along the tunnel. So these can be more severe problems together with a fireball. And even it can be the, the speed can be, the fan speed can be a little bit higher in the fireball. It make the blast wave, uh, the blast pressure may also get contribution from the fireball combustion. So it's apparently from both like a fireball lens and the subsequent uh, like ignite other vehicles, list of fire spread issues, and also the, the explosion hazards. I think like both will be more severe. Yeah. But of course, we need to quantify to see what's the consequence. And uh, also the subsequent uh, the fire, subsequent fire in the bus. So let's, uh, that can be similar. I think so. Yes, yes. But uh, my, we, my, it's my, like a new era anyway. So uh, due to really, there are so many types of uh, different types of vehicles really on roads and also in infrastructure like tunnels. Then these, they can combine them together, like have subsequent uh, incidents. So oh, this right. is really cause, how to say, complexity in really in design, in safety design. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, and I can add to, to about that accident that the only one that was in that bus was the driver and he, he luckily escaped because the fireball started inside the bus and, 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 and turned the doors open. So he could escape and, and uh, maybe if the bus would have been inside the tunnel, his escape route would have been probably be much, uh, much worse. So. Yeah, good point. And if, if you're interested in that accident, uh, I just uh, can say to the audience that we have another film about um, a deeper investigation about that accident. Okay, let's see if we have uh, time for any more questions here. Um, uh, there are questions about your experimental data and uh, more um, uh, more information about your work, and 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 um, we also have an uh, email address here, so so you can get connected afterwards and to discuss this even more. That's very good. Yeah, yeah, I think I will communicate with Anas. Very good, very good. Yes. Um, do you think we we have a question here about the the, the tunnel construction itself? Um, do you think the the pressure waves, for example, and the temperatures may they affect the the, the tunnel, or or is the risk mainly towards the people and the other vehicles in the tunnel? You mean for which type? For for example, a fire or explosion of a of a larger vehicle inside a tunnel would it be threat to the tunnel itself or do you think it's more a threat to the people inside it yep i think uh, like uh, the jet friends I may mean, for example if you have a site uh, your the nozzle the prd nozzle is towards the, the side of the wall of the tunnel so it may really uh, has uh, the temperature there is really high can easily over a thousand degree. And also if it's a large CNG tank, you know, the nozzle also need to be large or you have several nozzles. That means very long frame length. And also if it's a site towards the side, it, may can, it can easily ignite the vehicles besides anyway. So 
the fire spread uh, issue can be quite uh, significant, no matter is it towards the size or towards the the ceiling of the tunnel. And uh, yeah, so jet frame, of course, the duration is short, but so I think the main hazard is the the fire spread from such a large and long jet frames. It it, had, it create a very high radiation towards the surrounding vehicles and also the structure. Although it's a short, but uh, it, it mainly causes the fire spread and can like a cascading effect uh, here. Oh yes, of course. Yes, yes. We have yeah. Well, when, one question about um, you have been looking into tunnels and um, they usually have two open ends. Uh, but if you should compare this to a garage, for example, um, uh, which maybe just have one opening, do you think uh, the results would be different in any way? Like the explosion is kind of a transient behavior. So it the opening, like uh, if the glass wave didn't transport to the opening before that, uh, that moment, uh, yeah, the, it didn't uh, affect uh, too much. The opening, does, the boundary condition does not affect the bus wave really. But uh, of course, the, just like the difference between the, the case in a tunnel and in, in the open, if it's in the garage, it's more like a, like a tank rupture, right? it's more two-dimensional phenomenon. So the scenario will be also be different. But so it, it's kind of a scenario between the open scenario and the tunnel scenario. Okay, so it, but, so it has a, it's a special characteristics. I think so. Okay, thank you. So uh, they are to be investigated separately. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for the all the good questions, and uh, thank you for all the all the good answers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's quite interesting questions. Yeah, I think so too. Yes, a very interesting topic, and I think uh, much more uh, will be done on the topic. So, uh, looking forward to that. So. Yeah, you need to finance more projects on this topic. Yeah. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jing Sen. Uh, just going to wrap things up a bit and give you a tip about um, uh, uh, another presentation to look at about this of uh, the CNG bus. So, so and this is uh, on our web. Uh, sorry, about on our YouTube channel. You can find this presentation about that bus accident and uh, a deeper analysis that was done by a by colleague of Jing Sen about that accident. And uh, if you want to attend more Brownforce webinars, you can find them at our web uh, website uh, or by following us on LinkedIn, or you can register to our newsletter. And you will find that at the bottom of the website where you can register. We also have a YouTube channel and you can find earlier webinars and other other recorded seminars uh, to look at. And before we close, I would like to thank uh, Ying Sen again, of course, and thank you for all the good questions. I also like to thank my colleagues, Francis Eurenius and Matthias Samarin that have been producing this webinar and so thank you very much uh, please answer our questionnaire that will be sent to you after with the webinar that's very valuable for us to get your feedback and I hope to see you again soon on our webinars we have many coming up this spring and also please feel free to get in touch with us you can find our contacts uh, on the website so thank you bye bye <laughs>